Good morning and welcome to AKB Marin's second quarter presentation, where myself and CFO Katrine Klavnes will take you through the numbers from the quarter as well as the highlights. We'll have a section at the end for Q&A and you can already now start to email your questions at uh, ir at akbmarin.com. And I believe you will see the email address at the bottom of your screen throughout the presentation as well. I'm very pleased uh, with the performance of the second quarter as well as the outlook for the rest of the year. Our revenue ended on par with the same quarter last year, but with significant growth from the previous quarter. Our EBITDA of $21.4 million uh, shows good growth from the second quarter last year as well as significant growth from the previous quarter. I'm also happy to report positive numbers, black numbers at the bottom line with $15 million in net profit. On the ingredient side, we experienced strong growth both in volume and prices for our Creel with Q segment, while our Superba segment has been impacted by some of those macroeconomic challenges we see around us today. On the branded side, the private label demand is good, but we had some supply chain cha challenges in the second quarter that impacted the numbers. But I'm also happy to report that the Corey branded sales uh, offset some of those challenges in the private label and had a very strong quarter. Harvesting was also very strong with an all-time high second quarter number of 16,500 tons of production. That's 19% higher than the same quarter last year. We also spun out ION, our plastic circular startup, in the quarter, resulting in a net profit of $6.9 million. The revenue ended at $73.4 million. That's on par with the same quarter last year, but 28% growth compared to the previous quarter. And as mentioned, the EBITDA ended at $21.4 million. On the harvesting side, uh, our vessels were operating perfectly, uh, full uptime, no technical issues. There's good krill availability, and there is less competition on the fishing field compared to previous years. So far uh, this year, we have uh, harvested 66% of all the krill that's been harvested globally uh, so far this year. Uh, we have now moved the fleet to area 48.3, that's the most northern part of Antarctica. And if you look to the graph on the right side, you can see that in the third quarter last year, we struggled with harvesting both in 20 year 2020 and 2021. That was because we were not able to find any krill in area 48.3. But I'm very happy to report that the vessels are now harvesting in 48.3 and there is krill in the area. We're getting delivery on our uh, autonomous drone uh, in the third quarter and we'll take it back to the uh, harvesting uh, operations after the shipyard this autumn. This will be an important tool for us to make our fishing operation much more efficient. We're planning to uh, end this season at the beginning of October and go into shipyard and be back in the fishing field at the end of November. Last quarter, we gave you a deep dive in our branded business. Uh, this quarter, we'll dig a little bit deeper in the ingredient side of our business. Starting with the Creel with Q or Animal Health and Nutrition segment. As mentioned, we had a very strong quarter for Creel with Q with 18% growth compared to the same quarter last year. We got an important approval by the FDA for the U.S. market for our krill ingredients. That is very important because uh, most, most feed producers look at both the Canadian and the U.S. market as one market. So being able to access the U.S. market also opens up the Canadian market. So that's a whole new market for us to uh, go in with our products where we expect good demand in the years to come. It took us actually 10 years to get that approval in place. Also in the quarter, we published a new study demonstrating the superior growth benefits of krill in shrimp diets, where we basically compared krill with other key growth ingredients and krill outperformed everybody. 
This is good documentation for the shrimp customers globally and all the prospects that we're working with. And shrimp is also the fastest growing segment with our, within our animal health and nutrition segment. There's significant price inflation in the aquaculture industry, both on the uh, salmon prices and shrimp prices, but more importantly also on all the other raw materials and ingredients that goes into feed. Um, as a result of that, we are also planning to, or have already increased prices for our krill products. If you look at the slide and the graph to the left, you see that salmon prices has grown more than double the last year, while shrimp prices are up more than 30%. When you have high prices like that, you have good demand for feed and ingredients that facilitates growth both for salmon and for shrimp. This is a key driver for us for why we see an increased demand for krill these days. On the right graph, you see the development on some of the other key ingredients that goes into feed formulas. And as you can see, all ingredients have been growing quite significantly the last year. That makes the competitiveness of our krill ingredient high. So on the back of this, going into third quarter, we have increased the prices for our krill portfolio quite significantly. And even if we increased our prices significantly now into the third quarter, we're still very competitive and our ingredient provides a good return on investment for all the shrimp and salmon farmers out there. We have done many studies, both in shrimp and salmon, where we document the benefit our products make. And these studies are very often done in control environment. When farmers kind of look at these data, they always discount the results with that there's going to be lower effects when you look in a com commercial large-scale operation. So if you discount it by two-thirds, so you only believe in one-third of the results that we see in our studies, you'll see that both for salmon and for shrimp, there's a 300% return on investment if you add our krill ingredient into the diet. So it certainly look very positive uh, going forward for the krill segment. On the superb side, we did $14.5 million of revenue in the quarter, which is lower than what we anticipated earlier. There's two key drivers for that. Number one is the key growth market in China has basically been locked down for the last several months because of COVID, which means that both our sales rep and our customers hasn't really been able to do business the last months. Things are luckily now looking like it's going to start up, but there are still uncertainties for how this develops into the uh, coming quarters. The second effect is what we see, in, especially in the US, but also in other markets, how retailers and customers are preparing for a potential recession. We see the big retail chains in the US changing their policy for inventory to go from 10 weeks of sales to five weeks of sales. That impacts the orders the retailers send to our customers and the orders our customers send to us. And typically the customer will do the same, giving us a double impact. That has hit us quite significantly now in the second quarter and we believe we might see some of those effects also in the third quarter uh, coming up now. Uh, consumer demand is still good, so this is about balancing inventories. And of course you will have the same affect the other way around when things start to normalize again. We have a sales acceleration plan in place for Superba, and I'm actually very pleased with the development around that. The underlying activity, the leading indicators for Superba are very good. There's four pillars in the sales acceleration plan for Superba. Number one is to strengthen the sales organization with more resources on the ground, close to the prospect and the customers. Number two is uh, a high quality pipeline that we systematically follow up, both to increase it with new high quality prospects, but also convert it into hard business. Number three is new products and innovations that we're launching this year that will increase the addressable market for krill oil. And number four, last but not least, is the new studies and the new claims that will strengthen the competitiveness and the value proposition of Superba krill oil. And I will now take you through each of those four pillars. Starting with the 
organization side. So at the end of first quarter, Simon took over the leadership for our Superba segment or the human health and nutrition segment. And he's starting to make his mark on the segment. He has recruited two new leaders in the most important markets. Charlie, which is responsible for Americas, South America and North America, and Tong, which is responsible for the Asian region. Both Charlie and Tong has been recruited several new resources during the last couple of months, more or less double the sales force, so that we can be closer to the customer in Asia, open up new offices and new markets, and making sure that we can convert all those opportunities that we see out there. These new hires are typically uh, senior industry salespeople that already have the networks, know the industry, and can get a flying start <coughs> with Superba in the market. On the um, pipeline of prospects, um, most of our growth going forward will come from new prospects. We will also get growth from our existing customers, but the most important driver for growth is all those opportunities we see with new customers, both in existing markets and in new markets. And that's why both for Simon and myself, it's a big focus to build a high quality prospect pipeline that they constantly fulfill with new prospect and that we're able to follow up and convert into hard business. With combining the increased sales force and the network they have with the strengthened value proposition and the new studies and the new products coming out, we have a good uh, basis for building up a very strong uh, prospect pipeline. In the capital market update that we did in December, we shared some of the views of what we see as the potential for Superba. And as you can see illustrated on this slide from, from that presentation, we see an upside of more than three times the current sales of Superba. The third driver is new product uh, and innovations that we also talked about in the capital market update in December. Now we have done the first soft launch and planning now for a full rollout of our new product concept called Phospholipid Plus. You can read more about it on uh, www.phospholipid.plus. You'll see it in the bottom of, of the screen, the email address. What it is, it is a new product technology that will increase significantly the addressable market for krill oil. What we are doing, we're taking the properties of Krillo that makes it a more efficient omega-3 to utilize those properties also for other ingredients. And simply explain, if you remember the reason why omega-3 from Krill works better than other sources of omega-3 is because it's connected to this phospholipid molecule. And all the cells in our body has this layer of phospholipids and in order to enter the cells and has an effect, it needs to be in that phospholipid form. So what we have developed now is a technology where we can wrap these phospholipids you find in Krill oil around other ingredients, other molecules to enhance the performance of those other ingredients. So far we have developed four products where we both have formulated the products but also done studies where we can demonstrate actually how much better the other ingredient becomes. You can see on the right side here a little graph um, and this is from one of those ingredients that we have developed a product for, which is CBD, a uh, fast growing ingredient globally today. And the red line in the graph basically shows the uptake of CBD when you formulate it with our Phospholipid Plus formula compared to the other competing kind of formulas in the market today. And as you can see, the uptake of CBD is significantly higher than all the other uh, possibilities uh, to formulate CBD. That either drives the cost down for the CBD brand so they can use less CBD in their formula or they can make a superior CBD product to differentiate and drive growth. The importance of this product innovation is that it increases our uh, addressable market. Those four formula we're working with starts on the, actually on the omega-3 side where we're looking at our phospholipid technology to be used to wrap around other sources of omega-3 and expand the addressable market in the omega-3 space. Uh, the curcumin market or the curcumin ingredient, which is another ingredient that we've been working with, 
uh, is today a $200 million market growing quite fast. We will now be able to address that market as well with our Creole formula. The same goes for CBD, $1.6 billion, and uh, CoQ10, which is a $600 million market. So by this, we certainly have a much larger prospect group, a much larger addressable market for our Creole products. We are uh, planning for a full rollout of this product uh, in fourth quarter. And part of the shutdown that we talked about earlier in Houston is to prepare for commercial production of these type of formula. Last uh, but not least, it's the improved studies and claims uh, that have been developed lately for the Superba segment. Uh, we talked about the first, in the first quarter, we talked about this new important cardiovascular study that came out uh, that demonstrate how Krillor significantly reduced the uh, risk for cardiovascular disease. Uh, in the second quarter, we had another very important published paper documenting how Krilo enhances strength and muscle size for seniors. That gives our customers a new large addressable market, new value proposition in a market that where there is big demand for these type of products. The third important study is a stu study on arthritis. It's not published yet. It will be published about uh, August, so in, in about a month. Uh, and what that study demonstrates is that by taking uh, acrylol supplement, you reduce the pain related to arthritis significantly. This is a solid study and one of the few studies in omega-3 space that really documents how an omega-3 product, and specifically here, superb acrylol, reduces all the pain and discomfort related to the arthritis, which is a big uh, problem for a lot of people and in society today. On the back of these studies, we are seeking pre-approved health claims by some of the governments globally. In Australia, we have now filed uh, with the Australian government uh, and asked for a health claim based on that arthritis study. If we get this approved, it will be the first health claim of that type related to arthritis for any product in the Australian market. That will open up new possibilities for Superba in Australia. We expect a decision on that by the end of 2022. Uh, in China, we have filed for six what's called blue hats. Uh, that is also health claims pre-approved by the Ch Chinese government for six different type of health indications. These uh, processes typically take some time and we expect the first one to come through within next year. Also in Korea, we are making good progress. We have now three um, applications in with the Korean government and our partner in Korea is preparing for a decision quite soon for the first ones. So that was a little deep dive uh, into the ingredient side. Uh, in sum, we have these macroeconomic challenges that we've been facing right now on the Superba side, but I'm very happy with the underlying development for Superba, and I feel quite confident that we're going to reach our long-term targets of 15 to 20 percent growth per year for Superba. On the branded side, uh, we have good demand for the private label products. Uh, we have uh, order backlogs building up, but we've been having some supply chain issues, especially with ingredients coming from Asia during the quarter. That has impacted sales. Uh, we are working hard to set up a secondary supply for most of the important ingredients we have to make sure we are more robust in situations like this going forward. And by the end of Q3, we should be ha having all those secondary supplies up and running and qualified. Uh, also happy to see that Corey performs well in the second quarter, offsetting some of that shortfall that we had from the private label business. We also launched Mind and Body, as you can see illustrated on the right side on the slide, which is a new Corey product that will position Corey in the brain health category. We have received the first consumer feedback on the product, which is quite positive. Also, Lang, in part of their growth strategy, is about entering into new categories. And they have won recently some very important uh, businesses in some of those new categories they've been developing. That will hit our revenues from the beginning of 2023.
Good morning. I will now take you through the financials of the second quarter. Second quarter was more or less on par with the same quarter last year, slightly below on revenue with $73 million versus $74 million last year, and slightly above on adjusted EBITDA with $21 million versus $19 million last year. The adjusted EBITDA margin was up at 29% from 26% same period last year as a result of a higher gross profit for Quill Aqua in the ingredient segment. Due to good harvesting in Q1, higher aqua price and lower cost base. Brands is also showing a high gross, high gross profit as the relative higher sales of Cori, the brand compared to Lang in the quarter, increases gross margins. Net interest-bearing debt has increased with $25 million since Q1 and $38 million last 12 months due to investments in growth projects like the Invi protein launch plant, Lisoveta, as well as maintenance capex. In the second quarter, the Lang earnout was paid out, amounting to $11.1 million, including interests. This concludes the earnout program with the former owners of Lang. Moving into the ingredient segment. Revenue in the ingredient segment is up 8% from same quarter last year at $49 million. This is driven by the krill category, and more specifically krill aqua, after a very strong quarter with 26% increase from second quarter last year, marking the quarter the all-time high for aqua. High demand on the back of global food ingredient price development and good harvesting in the first quarter led to high sales of krill aqua, and prices were slightly up compared to same quarter last year. Going forward, we expect to see a significant price increase for second half of the year as a result of the implemented price increase for the product across all customers and accounts. Superba sales were lower, 12% lower than same period last year, mostly as a result of lower average price due to customer mix. However, compared to the first quarter this year, Superba was up 22% as a result of the new sales organization coming in place and ongoing implementation of several initiatives, as Mats explained earlier. Adjusted EBITDA was $22, $22 million for the segment, up from $18 million last year. This is driven by higher sales and higher gross margins for the Krill Aqua product, that in turn increases the EBITDA margin to 45%, up from 40% last year. Higher harvesting combined with lower cost drives down unit cost and increases gross profit. In addition, the company has managed to keep cost inflation under control, despite a record high shipment of Krill Aqua in the quarter. There were no adjustments for EBITDA in the ingredient segment in the quarter. I will come back to the ION adjustment, which is done on a group level. The brand segment performed below same quarter last year, which was the second highest quarter for Lang. This quarter, Lang has struggled with supply chain and logistical challenges, and this has led to issues with sourcing key ingredients, and several retailer shipments have been pushed out of the quarter. As a result, brands was down 16% compared to same period last year. Part of the Lang decline was offset by increased sales from Epion, of the Cori Creel Oil brand. The increased distribu distribution in Q1 with Sam's Club and Costco continued to drive high sales in the quarter compared to Q2 last year. As marketing support for the Cori brand continues, the adjusted EBITDA for this segment is on par with same period last year at $0.3 million and with an adjusted EBITDA margin of 1%. Lang is struggling with inflation, especially payroll and supply chain, leading to a lower EBITDA margin than last year. Gross margin for the segment, however, is up as the mix between Lang and Epion has shifted to a larger portion of Epion sales that carries a higher gross margin. Marketing spend for the Cori in the brand, Cori brand in the quarter was $1.6 million. A few items on the PL uh, I would like to share some more detail on. Uh, 
Um, first, the sGNA levels shows stable development compared to last year, which indicates good cost control despite significant increase in aqua freight volumes and higher inflation levels. Second, other operating income includes the transactional gain from the deconsolidation of ION of $6.9 million. In addition, a gain from rebalancing our fuel hedge contracts of $2.9 million. Third, net financial items include a net agio effect of $5.4 million as a result of denominated NOC debts for our overdraft facility. Four, depreciation for operating assets is down as a result of longer useful life uh, for Saga, our oldest vessel, which has been extended from 2025 to 2029. And, five, and finally, the fifth adjustments in the quarter include the $6.9 million from the ION transaction that is categorized as a non-recurring item and hence excluded from adjusted EBITDA. For the balance sheet, I would like to point uh, to the following key comments. Um, first, investments in equity accounted investees includes ION at fair value as per the transaction with, with Ocean 14 Capital. Second, inventories continues to grow, but the ongoing shutdown in Houston for the rest of the year will help balancing this to more normalized levels. Three, derivative assets include the fuel hedge contracts. Mark to market value was $21.4 million, and that is booked here, while the change in value since last period has booked at other comprehensive income. Realized gain is booked towards the fuel cost and rolled out as a reduction in COX. Fourth, other non-interest-bearing, non-current liabilities is down as a result of the payment of the earnout to the former owners of Lang. $10.5 million plus interest uh, was the amount of the total earnout. Um, Five, equity is up as a result of positive net profit year-to-date and increased value of our hedge contracts reflected in the other comprehensive income. And equity ratio is currently 49%. And finally, the company has obtained a waiver for the leverage covenant this quarter with a maximum threshold of 6.5 net interest bearing debt over last 12 months EBITDA, of which we are compliant. Finally, the cash flow for the quarter. Cash from operating activities was negative 6.1, 6.8 million dollars. Net agio effects of 5.4 contributed positively, while working capital changes, including, continues to be negative due to inventory buildup and higher accounts payable. Cash flow from investing activities was negative 19.5 million dollars, with capex of 7.7 million dollars spent on growth projects such as Protein and Lysoveta, as well as some maintenance capex for both the vessels and Houston. And the earnout to the former owners of Lang amounted to a total of 11.1 million dollars. Additional drawdown under the debt facility resulted in cash flow from financing activities of 24.3 million dollars. And finally, net cash flow in the quarter was negative 2 million dollars. Wrapping up the presentation, based on second quarter figures and yet to date, we reiterate our full year targets of revenue growth of 20 to 25 percent and adjusted EBITDA margin of 20 to 25 percent. That concludes the quarterly presentation and we will now open up for Q&A. Uh, please send any questions you might have to ir at akebiomarine.com.
Okay, thank you. Uh, let's open up the, uh, the Q&A session with a question from investor Stian uh, Larsen. Um, what is the status in South Korea? Uh, I think he re refers to the uh, Superba krill oil sets. Uh, yeah, so uh, we have uh, just been in Korea uh, and visiting both customers and, uh, and the regulatory bodies there to get a good status. Uh, I mentioned we have three applications now in progress and our partner in Korea expect a conclusion on the first one quite uh, soon. So we'll, uh, we'll keep uh, investors updated as soon as uh, something uh, happens on, on the regulatory side. The second question from uh, Stian is, uh, how large is uh, the historical sales of Superba in China? I believe it's, uh, uh, depends what you mean by historical, but I think today it's about 8-10% of our sales. Um, but it's, it is the second largest omega-3 market in the world after the US. So there's a significant potential in the, in the Chinese market for, for our products. Um, last question from uh, Mr. Stian Larsen, uh, and as he puts it, is 16,500 uh, tons in uh, offshore production as good as it gets? It seems like the, everything went uh, well for the company, or, and also he adds, why is the volume down from first quarter? Uh, the volume is always down in, in the second quarter, typically. Uh, so that's no normal with the seasonality. I think we have still a lot of areas to improve when it comes to harvesting, even if 6,500 was quite good. Um, we have uh, still a lot of fishing time lost in logistical operations. Uh, we have our new vessel provider in operation. It takes some time to get that uh, kind of going smoothly uh, and, and making sure that the uh, Vessels are not idle because they're full and that we are able to do offload quick. So there's uh, areas of improvement there. And also in the quarter, we spent quite some time moving between the different areas. So having, for instance, our drone in place will also save us a lot of time and help us make better decisions in terms of where to locate the, the vessel. So there's still a lot of uh, areas of improvement. So, uh, but all in all, uh, a good quarter. Thank you. Moving over to a couple of questions from uh, Axel Jakobsen, Equity Research Analyst at uh, Arctic. Um, can you please comment on the gross margin for Krill Aqua in the second quarter? Um, yeah, um, it's, I mean, the gross margin is driven by three uh, factors. It's the uh, sales, uh, the price and the cost base or the unit cost. And this quarter we see uh, positive development on all three, which is then driving the cost margin uh, up. So we have increased sales, uh, we have slightly higher prices, although the full price increase haven't been implemented in Q2. That will come in the second half of the year. And then we also have a lower cost base, or a lower, which translates into a lower unit cost uh, last quarter, which again then, get, again then translates into a lower COGS for the second quarter. We also have a very favorable cost-based development now for the second quarter, which again will translate into good margins also for next quarter for Krill Aqua. Uh, speaking of which, he has another question. Uh, any comments on how much uh, Krill Aqua prices will increase in the third quarter? Uh, yeah, we, we, have, uh, we have set the prices for the third quarter already. Um, so, um, and customers have accepted it. I think we will not go into the details of it, but it will be quite a, a significant lift in, in prices for the quarter. Uh, thank you. And by that, I think you answered uh, the question of Carl Emil Kjølås Johansen from Pareto as well. Um, there are no further questions at the moment. I suggest we wait a few seconds and see whether there are others coming in. doesn't seem to be the case. So 
Okay, thank you for, uh, for listening to us today. And uh, feel free to reach out to Kalle if you have any further questions later.